guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about am I ready to sit for the medical coding certification exam? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, I usually get this question from viewers and they're usually asking me about the CCS or the gold standard of medical coding credentials, the certified coding specialist. Hey Blue, uh, I've been studying and I went through this program. Am I ready to take the CCS exam? Guys, first of all, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know your study ethic. I don't know how hard you've been studying. I don't know how serious you've been taking this um, exam study time. <laughs> I don't know you. Okay, that's first of all. So I, I can't really answer specifically specific people. Am I ready? Um, so I'm just doing this video for everybody. These are the tips that you should be already squared away with before you even think about taking a medical coding certification exam. Now this applies to the four main ones, which is the CCS, the gold standard of medical coding credentials. <laughs> it is a credential offered with AHIMA, certified coding specialist. Then there's a certified coding associate that is also offered with the American Health Information Management Association. And there's the CCSP, the certified coding specialist physician based. Then with AAPC, they have their flagship credential, which is the CPC. Now, are you ready? How do you know if you're ready or not? Sometimes people will get themselves so worked up because they're so scared and, oh no, Blue, uh, I'm not ready and I'm gonna fail. And okay guys, if you have that ugly thought mentality in your head, you gotta get rid of that, okay? That's first of all, you've been in a program, so it's not like you're walking in off the street not knowing anything about medical coding. You've been studying it for hopefully nine months, 12 months, or 18 months. Now, if you are in a fast-paced medical coding program, yes, I understand. Fast-paced being four months or 16 weeks. Uh, four months, six months, people ask me, well, what about eight months? Eight months is a heck of a lot better than six months or four months, okay, guys? So if you're in one of these fast-paced medical coding programs, I can understand the need to hit the bricks. Like, am I ready? I don't think I'm ready. And you wanna study for a few more months? Yes, I am totally on board with that because I do think that this takes time. People tell me, oh yeah, well I learned how to code in two months. Guys, no, no. You may learn the basics of how to code. Like you may know like the ins and outs a little bit of how to code, but to say that you learned coding in two months, no ma'am, no sir, no. No, you're learning too fast, okay, that you are probably missing a lot of things, okay? And when you stop and you think about it, um, if you can't get through advanced um, study prep guides, yeah, you're not ready, you know? Uh, so here's the thing. How do you know if you're ready? So you know that you're ready when you have been diligently studying. And diligently studying meaning that you've been going 20 hours per week. And that is like your program time included. 20 hours a week, no blue, I can't do that. I do less time than that. Okay, then you're probably not ready. Um, you're asking me, okay? So I'm going to bond as much information as you all are giving me, <laughs> which isn't very much. But what, I'm, what I am saying is this. You have to be good at your medical terminology, your anatomy, your pathophysiology. You have to also know about HIPAA. You have to also know about your, um, your ethics, right? You also have to know about each one of the books, okay? The ICD-10-CM manual, the CPT manual, the Higgs Pix manual. Uh, if you are taking the inpatient certifications, one of those, the CCA or the CCS, you have to know about your ICD-10-PCS manual. You have to know about the inpatient uh, guidelines. You have to know about the outpatient guidelines. You have to have had, you have to have been reading your medical coding guidelines at least once per week. At least that's what I recommend anyway. Um, but if you've gone through all these things and you've been going through the workbooks, like the workbooks that I recommend, right? And I always leave them in the description box below. Um, if you've been going through these and you've been timing yourself diligently, okay? Because you get a roughly two minutes per question if you're taking an AHIMA exam, any one of these, because AHIMA gives you a range of questions. They don't have a solid number of questions like AAPC. AAPC, it is 100 questions in four hours. So you have two minutes, 40 seconds per question. So if you've been drills, doing drills, and you've been trying to practice uh, with, your, with your CPC study guide, right? And you've been going through there, you've been timing yourself, and you've been answering it in, 
it in two minutes and 40 seconds, <laughs> uh, then you're doing fairly well. Uh, if you're with a HEMA, again, you got roughly two minutes per question. So you have to be able to read a lot of material uh, in a short amount of time. And you have to kind of know where you're looking, uh, especially if you're taking the CCS. The CCS is a monster. It is a very rigorous exam. And speaking as a, a veteran since 2008, uh, when I took it last year, oh yeah, it was a beast. And it, it was very draining when I got done with it. I passed it on the first try, but trust me, that was just like, wow. It was very uh, a very rigorous exam. It really does push you because it's not, it's not just outpatient coding. This is inpatient and outpatient coding. So you're kind of having to switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. And people don't take the CCS very seriously uh, because I see people being so like cavalier about it. Like, oh, should I just go ahead and take the CCS exam? They, they told me I could uh, be ready for a HEMA or AAPC. And, you know, I just kind of went through, you know, the, the ICD-10 PCS book. It seems like it's easy, guys. That's That's the wrong attitude to have. If that's what you're thinking that the CCS is going to be, oh, you've got a rude awakening coming for you. You know, uh, I'm just, I'm just being very honest with you guys because that test is a very rigorous exam. And the reason that it is so rigorous is because it is the mastery of the inpatient and the outpatient side. And this is a credential that most employers will look for before any other credential, okay, because they know how difficult that exam is. All you need is just that one certification. That's all you need, okay? <laughs> I see people trying to add on different ones and it's not necessary, not with the CCS. Now, I got the CCSP first. That's why I still have both of them. Um, but that being said, you know, if, you, if you've already gotten the CCS, you don't need any other credentials from any other associations. Trust me, that is gold standard enough. <laughs> um, but with that CCS, you have to be quick and you have to be like you have to master a lot of stuff because none of these exams are the same all the exams are different with the HEMA and so uh, because of this you you never really know what is going to be on the test so if you are in these horrible Facebook medical coding groups that I tell you guys to stay out of but you'll still go to them anyway uh, if you're in there and they say oh yeah this no yeah that don't listen to everybody what everybody says about these tests guys because at the end of the day, the domains are on the AHIMA website. You can check to see what, what you need to study. And if you're telling me that you have no idea about reimbursement, you're not ready. You are not ready to take this test. Um, they're, they're talking about, oh, well, I don't understand like reimbursement classifications and everything. Then you, you are not ready. Okay, guys, uh, those domains are listed on the AHIMA website. You can check to see, you know, did your program prepare you enough? Uh, do you know enough of these elements of this and this uh, in order to be confident enough? Now, of course, you may not be confident when you're walking in there uh, and you may be like worried and maybe you're just naturally a nervous test taker. But here's the thing, guys, when it comes to these tests, you're not walking in there with no knowledge. You're walking in there with knowledge already. Now it's just up to you to get like in there and show them what you're made out of. If you've been practicing with these books, if you've been opening each and every single one of the books that you need for your test, if you're taking the, um, the CCS or the CCA and you've opened up and flipped in each, every single page, uh, the ICD-10 CM, the ICD-10 PCS and the CPT manual, if you've opened and looked at every single page, you know and you can familiarize yourself with where everything is at in those books, okay? Um, if you are taking the CCSP or the CPC and you are flipping through and you look through your ICD-10-CM, your CPT and your hicks picks manual so that you know where everything is, that's going to set you up for success. If you are reading your medical coding guidelines once per week, like I said, once per week, the entire thing, if you are reading them once per week, that's gonna set you up for success because you're gonna know your coding guidelines. It's gonna be like second nature to you. While you're in your program, you should be reading those coding guidelines once per week. The benefit of it is, there are many benefits, but number one, you're gonna know the guidelines forwards and backwards because you don't have to memorize, but you will be able to recall. 
Number two, it's going to make you a faster reader. This is where people will tell me they get tripped up is that they don't read fast. Blue, I don't read fast. I, I'm a slow reader. That's not going to cut it for this field. You will not only have to pass a timed exam, but when you are in the real world, you will have to meet productivity standards. Productivity standards that have vary, right, from place to place. And not only that, when you're looking through these documentation, all this documentation, um, doctors are going to put their notes wherever they want to. <laughs> and they're going to document whatever way they want to. Uh, sometimes they do really well and sometimes they're just are having a day and they're going to do whatever it is that they want to do. So you have to sometimes do some investigative work, right? And not only that, sometimes you may not understand everything, so you're going to have to learn how to look stuff up. And so that's all going to take time. But if you are a fast reader to begin with, this will help you. And if you're not a fast reader right now, guys, it's okay. It's like a muscle that you have to build. You will be able to build this up over time. I started as a slow reader myself. Uh, but I did eventually get faster because I kept reviewing the coding guidelines. And so those are the things that, you know, if you've already gone through those, if you're, if you're going through those, the CPC study guide, like I, like I told y'all to, um, or if you got yourself the AHA book, the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS coding handbook with the answers, if you've worked through that, um, that's also going to set you up for success because that was those were the two books that I used when I was studying for the uh, CCS exam and also for the CCSP exam, but mostly for the CCS exam is where I use the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS manual. I also used the um, Optum360. If you're not familiar with Optum360, this is not an ad, but <laughs> Optum360 has the most incredible books when it comes to um, the ICD-10-CM manual uh, and of course the Hicks Picks manual, they have that as well. Uh, everybody has to use the same CPT manual from the, uh, the AMA or the American Medical Association. But when it comes to your uh, diagnosis book uh, and your ICD-10 PCS book, you do have your choice of publisher. I do recommend uh, Optum360. In the back of the ICD-10 PCS manual, there is Appendix M and it has a whole list of all of these uh, procedures that you can code. And in Appendix N, like in Nancy, it has all of the answers and it has some of the rationale. So that was also what I used to prepare myself. Uh, because if you are going through those and you're very familiar with how to look things up in the book for the PCS manual, again, it's going to make it a lot quicker for you to get through these tests because you are going to be familiar with the material itself as far as like, you know, how to look up codes in the book very quickly. Uh, the people who are not being prepared for themselves, not preparing themselves, um, are the ones that kind of get stuck. And then they spin their wheels and they spend all their time on one question. And then by the time you know it, the test is over. Uh, with AHIMA, you cannot flag, you cannot go back. You have to answer the question and move on. If you do not answer the question quickly, obviously all the time that you are Spinning on that one question, that clock is still ticking. And again, you can't move on until you've answered the question. Now with AAPC, yes, you can, you know, if you're taking the test in person, you can uh, look at, you know, go to whatever section you want to start at and go from there. Uh, it's because it's a paper-based exam and you are uh, using one of those scantrons <laughs> to, uh, you know, uh, mark your answers on the test. So, I mean, it's it's totally up to you guys. But I've heard of people getting so nervous that they messed up the Scantron and they were pressing down too hard. Guys, it's not that serious. You know, there's nothing that is so much that you have to work yourself up and mess yourself up for something so little. In the grand scheme of things, you are going to have a lot of time um, to learn more, but you need to just get through this exam part and show what you know. And you do know a lot. You know more than you think you know. Uh, but again, if you're gonna get hung up on a question, you know, it's gonna throw everything away if you get stuck there and you don't move forward. You guys, you have to move forward. So at least that's just my advice anyway. But if you have taken the time to put yourself in like a, those, um, like you, where you're doing like a practice, practice run, 
So you're taking the amount of time for the exam, like the four hours. Uh, some people have said, well, you know, I wanted to do, uh, just break it down to do two hours and then just do another two hours. Guys, um, that's not the way that the test is going to be set up. So you really want to kind of prepare yourself the way the test is set up. You don't have to take my advice, but this is what I did. You know, I took the time, those four hours that I needed to have for the exam, and I ran through and I saw where, okay, I need to like speed it up. I need to do this and do that. So it's entirely up to you guys, whatever way you want to do it. Uh, but I'm just telling you, do your time where you're sitting there and you're, you're blocking everything out and you're trying to work on those tests. Um, now, if you've got the uh, AHEMA prep books, I do not recommend those for the exams, the CCS, CC, uh, the CCSP or the CCA. Uh, they do have those books. Uh, a lot of people depend on those books. They say, oh, well, I did really good on the practice book, so I should be able to do really good on the exam. Those questions are not on the exam. I'm just letting y'all know that right now. I know that's like, well, of course they wouldn't be. <laughs> but there's a lot of people who think that they are, that, they're, that those questions are there on the exam, and they are not. And so I'm the one who gets the angry emails, okay? <laughs> so I'm just letting y'all know that right now. Uh, those questions are not on the test. Do not rely on that book um, to be your barometer of if you're going to be able to pass a test or not. It's going to come down to your knowledge. So that is just what I have to say about that. That in mind, uh, time yourself, right? Get, get some questions and time yourself. Even if you are timing yourself with a CPC book, for the, even if you're taking the AHIMA exams, I say that all the time. Um, and people might think that that's a little backwards, but uh, guys, we are all tested on the CPT manual. We are all tested on the ICD-10 PCS manual. So it, it all translates the same, all right? So uh, I like the CPC study guide and it did help me to prepare. Um, I like it because it's very straightforward. There's a couple of the questions I disagree with the codes that they selected, but that's okay. Uh, for the most part, it is right on the money. It is very straightforward and I like the way that it's explained. So that is my advice, guys. Make sure that you are timing yourself, that you are going through all those books, that you don't get in your own head. Get out of your own way, guys. Really, truly. Get out of your own way and allow yourself to say, you know, I'm just going in to this exam and I'm going to be ready because this isn't my first day as a medical coder, like giving out my knowledge. Uh, this is going to be like I've, I've had my time to practice and it's, it's time to show what I can do. And that's what you got to walk in with. You got to have that attitude that, okay, I can do this. And, and trust me, if you've been studying, the results will show. But if you allow yourself to get in your own way, there's nothing no one can do until you're ready, guys. Literally nothing no one can do. Nothing no one can say to you until you are ready. So that's just my advice anyway, guys. Study. Study hard. Make sure that you are putting in your time 20 hours a week at least. That's, that's just what I recommend, you know. Uh, you may have a bunch of excuses, but that's that's not that's not conducive to you know being successful in those exams. I'm just saying. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.